Hi, and on today's video, we're going to cover off the wonderful art of PCI pass-through on Proxmox to enable GPU pass-through. Now, the particular reason I'm doing this is for Jellyfin, and I'm going to be totally honest. Since the last time I've done this for my Plex server, things have changed. And if you follow a lot of the guys out there, you're going to come unstuck. So I will keep some of my troubles and failings in this video so that you don't make the same mistakes I did because it's actually a lot easier than I first thought. So stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go into the shell. You may see me do this across a couple of nodes. That is just by design because of the fact I'd already done this on some of them. Now what we need to do is update the grub. Now if you built yours in UEFI, you will need to use a different command, which I've stuck on the video just now, because it's slightly different. However, if you've done this in Proxmox in BIOS mode, it's absolutely the way to go. Now that line above this one, which mentions the Linux default quiet, is realistically the one that we need to change. So. What I'm going to do, instead of changing it, I'm just going to comment that out in a minute after I've pasted this in. So, again, dependent on whether you've got an Intel-based or AMD-based, the two commands, again, are below. But what I would strongly suggest is you add the PT in because that does improve performance a little bit. Uh, once that's done and saved, you'll notice I commented out the other line. We just need to update the grub. So I'll just paste that in. And click enter this will take a bit of time because it is rebuilding that grub configuration file and the image itself so there we go and that one's done now what we need to do as well if we're going to do video pass through is to add in the vfio modules which we add into this modules in ETC. And again, it's just a simple copy and paste into there. I use Nano, you can use Vim if, you, if you're more comfortable with Vim. That's totally up to you, but you just need to add those in there. Now the next step will be to add in or block list the drivers so that the Proxmox host itself doesn't try to use this graphics card because that certainly wouldn't help us any way, shape or form. You don't need to add all of these. We will for at least NVIDIA need to add the Navua and the NVIDIA ones. If obviously you've got a, a Radeon, it's worth adding. I mean, I'm just gonna add them now because in the future, if I do decide to add anything else, it's already there and to see what that those commands do we can just go into that comp file which we're just going to do now all it does is just adds a line in to blacklist them so I'm just going to show you that here quickly and as you can see they're there so if we exit out of that and then run the following command just update that as well and after this point we will need to do a reboot now this works for many things so obviously I've done an extra step here on the graphics card one thing you will need to note is that you will need to make sure in the BIOS that you've set up the ability for it to use VTD and IOMMU there are guides out there again depending on your system it may vary but once this is complete, we will then run a reboot. So once we've rebooted and I have just changed nodes, just so that you, there's no confusion why I'm now on Quadro. What I'm now looking at is to find some information from the host before we can then go on and do elements with the end virtual machine. So the command I've got to run is to basically pull out the IDs or the PCIe IDs for the device and NVIDIA when I use my graphics card will definitely have two. One is normally for the graphics card of the video itself, the other will be for the audio device. So 
Let's run those commands. So running the following command will give us a full list. So this will include everything that has a individual ID. And what I'll be looking for is my NVIDIA ones, which there are two listed as mentioned. You've got the audio controller and the VGA part. And I'm gonna copy that and stick that into Notepad. Now that is just to help because we are going to need that information later. So let's keep that somewhere safe for now. And what we're gonna then need to do is run a couple more commands to pull out the rest of the information. So once that's in, what we'll do is get ourselves in a position where we can run the additional commands down the bottom here. And this is so that we can get the full IDs of both Now I do make a couple of mistakes in here, mainly around the dots, as you can tell. And like I said, I did want to leave some of the crazy mistakes that I make because it's the sort of thing that I've seen people on forums pick up on and have challenges with. It is a semicolon between the device IDs, not double dots. So let's just change that. And that, no, that is definitely a dot handy. <coughs> And there we go. So that 10DE1C31 is the part I'm particularly interested in. I will have to run the same command to get the audio device as well. But at the moment, we'll just capture that so that we've got both available to us. So using the wonderful up key, I can pull in the last command. I just change that to one. And there we are. So I will capture that as well. I said realistically I'm only interested in the 10 DE part but it's worth just capturing at this point anyway okay and the last thing that we need to do before we do a lot of the work itself on the Jellyfin or Ubuntu server is to physically pass through the device to that VM you can do it using the terminal however I'm quite used to doing it this way now, and to be honest, it kind of enables you to be a little bit more foolproof because you can double check what you're doing. Now, it's worth noting that once you do this, you will potentially, well, I've always found most of the time, lose access to the console within Proxmox because there's then a bit of a mismatch with the drivers. So what you're going to need to do is make sure that you've got an option to SSH in. And when we finally click add, which we'll do just now, you will notice that the device goes orange. At that point, we need to do a reboot of the VM. So we'll stop. So if you've been good and followed my previous guides where you've set up a guest agent on the Ubuntu server, you won't have too many challenges at this point because you'll be able to find the IP from Proxmox to help you SSH in. But then again, you should always know the IP address of your Jellyfin server because you'd have set it up in a certain way anyway. Now, all we're going to do, like I mentioned, is just do a stop and start of this device, and that will initiate the graphics card. So let's just run a stop, give it a few seconds, and then we'll restart the device. Now, if I go onto console, Normally you'd expect to see Ubuntu server booting up here, but as I mentioned, because I've added a new GPU, this is where it gets confused. So we're not gonna to worry too much about that. You do need to bear in mind this is a challenge because VNC won't connect, it will just sit there. So you will need the IP address and an SSH tool. I use TerraTerm, but you can use Putty, etc., to make sure that you can connect onto the device. So I'm just going to load up TerraTerm ready and then we'll carry on with the next steps shortly. So there we are, that's the first part done. And if you're just now doing so with Windows, you can pass through the device using the GUI. Everything's pretty happy. You then just install the Windows drivers and you're, you know, you're kind of set and play around with the settings. 
If you're like me though and you've built this in Ubuntu, which I certainly have my Jellyfin, there's a lot more we need to do. So stay tuned and we'll cover off that part. So one thing we do need to do now we're on to our Ubuntu device is to make sure we blacklist that Navua driver again because this is one of the things that I found I had the biggest challenges with. I followed a lot of guides on how to do this because it's been quite a while since I had my Plex server set up and there's many different ways to do it but this is the key thing is to make sure this device is blacklisted because if it isn't it will basically try to take over everything and you'll never get the Nvidia device working properly. So works very similar to the way that we've done stuff before but obviously this one is a little bit more populated all i'm going to do is add that blacklist Nivua into here we will then have to do the update that we did previously on the proxmox host and then do a reboot so let's just save that one in once that's saved in we can just then run the update so let's just quickly run that update and we'll let that do its bit. And it's probably a good point at this time to actually reboot the host just to make sure that's all applied successfully. It does take a little while to generate, but um, that's going to blacklist that Navua driver. Then we can actually get on with the rest of it. And I will cut to the chase on what worked, and then I'll probably add in the outtakes in a short while. So this next part is going to show you exactly how to do it now. And this is from versions 22 0.04 onwards this worked for me first time where some of the other methods using wget and trying to install were missing dependencies that caused challenges so i'll do this and then show you where i went wrong so let's cover off how to do it properly uh, there might the other ways might work but i found this one worked simpler and easier for me so i'm just going to run the following command ubuntu drivers devices and what it's done is found that my NVIDIA card hasn't got a driver installed yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this automatically do this for me because this method seems to work the best and easiest. It installs all of the dependencies that may be missing, but let's just do it. So sudo Ubuntu drivers auto install and off it goes. And I'm going to speed this bit up because it does take a bit of time. I did, however make the horrible mistake which i'll show you at the end of thinking that this is all i needed to do and it would work fine i.e just basically running it and then running nvidia smi and everything would be hunky dory and i'd see the graphics driver like with most things when you've installed a driver it's always worth rebooting and that's certainly what i needed to do so if i just run nvidia smi it will tell me that the device isn't available and it can't communicate with it. So let's just pull that up now. And as you can see, it failed. And at this point, I was almost pulling my hair out, but I realized that that was it just needed a reboot. And again, come on, Andy, you need to use sudo. So yeah, we do a sudo reboot and everything should be golden. So now we've rebooted the host. I'm just going to pull that back up and in here and show you that my NVIDIA driver is now working and that's a great thing. So relieved. I was pulling my bloody hair out for some time trying to get this to work. Mainly because some of the guides out there tell you to use wget to do it, which I'm sure does work, but there must be some missing dependencies somewhere whether it's something to do with NVIDIA or Ubuntu, I'm not sure. However, this other method seemed to work first time for me. So I would strongly recommend doing it this way in the future because it just seems to do it. And I think if you're then doing an update, I'd assume it'd work the same way. it just basically find any updates and run there. Now, what I want to do is install this other package. Now, what this package will do is give me access to kind of performance metrics on the device because when I'm transcoding I want to see how much of a load is applied to my um, graphics card 
but also it will kind of enable me to demonstrate that we can show how the transcodings worked. Now what I'm going to do is once this is done and installed, I'll load this up and then pull my Jellyfin over so I can turn on hardware transcoding and then I will deliberately pick two films, one that I know will need transcoding into my web browser and one that won't. So you can show the difference. So we'll just finally install this package. And then we'll just run the package itself so we can see what I'm talking about. And there we are. That is the process of getting an NVIDIA driver passed through to Ubuntu server ready for Jellyfin. My God. So moving over to Jellyfin, let me just pull this over just to make this fairly seamless for us. I've opened it up in a window. I'm just going to drag it over so that we can set up bits on here. So we need to go into the dashboard. We need to make sure that you're logged in with an account that has access. So if we go into dashboard and then into here, transcoding, I will be selecting NVIDIA NVEC. I'm not going to change anything at the moment. I'm just going to kind of run it as it is. I will probably play around with these settings at a later date and probably do a video on the best settings. However, at this point, I'm just going to click save because I want to get this up and running. And then what I'm going to do... So let's just pick on two films that I know will... One will require transcoding, the other not. So Too Fast, Too Furious. This should just play natively. Shouldn't need it. So it should come through direct play. So I won't have any challenges there. And I can kind of prove that by looking at the playback information. So let's just have a look in there. And you can see that we do have direct play happening. So we now need to pick something that I know will need transcoding. And this certainly will. Such a great film as well. So if you look instantly, you can see that we've already got now some activity on the graphics card and it is transcoding. So my God, wasn't that painful? I will now add the outtake on if you want to see what went wrong when I tried to do it the other way. However, if you just want to watch what worked, that's all you need to see. Use the auto update version. It works so much easier. You won't have any challenges at all. So if you like what I've done today, hit the like and subscribe. But that is how to pass through your NVIDIA, and mine was a Quadro P2200, through a VM, into Proxbox, and then into Ubuntu, and transcoding videos for Jellyfin. Cheers. So you've stuck around to watch the outtake. Uh, I've cut it down to one. There was quite a few, but this is what I did wrong by following another guide. There's plenty of guides out there that will tell you to go and download the NVIDIA Linux driver, the latest one, using wget, and then to run it. Now, the first time I did, you'll see I got this error with Enable to find the development tool, CC, in your path. So there's obviously a dependency missing. So what I decided to do was actually run it, removing some of those no questions and UEI or UI none, to see if I could get down to what was causing the problem, not realising it was staring me completely in the face. So let's just let this run through. And the way of doing it this way is you kind of get the prompts, which helps. And that kind of led me onto the path of, hang on a minute, maybe I'm using a slightly depreciated way of installing the NVIDIA driver. And when it smacked me straight in the face, Then I realised what a numpty I was. So this part here kind of shows you what part of the challenge was. So and it's saying an alternative method of installing NVIDIA driver was detected. This is usually a package provided by your distributor. And you can see I got the same error. So it's kind of telling me what's wrong. And then I read above, just here where it says that. And I was like, 
okay, that's where I've been going wrong.